Hello! So this is the last session of this introductory tutorial on using Builder and Results by CMG. And today we're just going to learn two small short things, and that is one, how to do triggers, and two, how to create new horizontal wells. So let's start with the trigger. So let's say from our previous, um, previous parts of the exercise, we notice, um, you know, production might not be the best, um, maybe we could keep the production a bit higher if we did some water injection. Who knows? Maybe it could help out a bit. So, we want to do a trigger that whenever the reservoir pressure goes below a certain amount, we're going to start injecting water into the reservoir. So if you look here at our wells, we will see that we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, and 10 as active producers. And we can use well 7 and well 9 well, seven over there, well, nine over there, and well, seven over there. Maybe they can turn into injectors and uh, inject some fluid to keep the reservoir pressure high and improve production. So, the way we're going to do that is we're going to do to define a trigger. So, I clicked here and I went into trigger, new, okay, and my trigger is going to be um, applying on the entire field. So, let's go and sector, entire field. So whenever the entire field goes below a value of 2300 psi, then we want to apply this trigger. And what is the trigger? It's going to be the following. Now I already pre-wrote this. What this says is that whenever it goes below 2300 psi, and that's the poor volume weighted pressure, then I want to turn well 7 into an injector, a uh, mobility weighted injector. And I want it to inject incompressible water, and I want it to operate with a maximum bottom hole pressure of 3,625 in a continuous fashion. And the same way with well number 9. This is great. That means low pressure, start injecting. That's the plan. So I'm going to click on OK, and this is going to apply on this date. Let's just change it to 2017, 0201, after our... Uh, historical data is ready passed. And okay, we are ready. That's it. We just click on apply and on okay. And then we have our trigger and we can see it over here. Great. We got the trigger deal done. We're not going to go and look. Now you should go and run this simulation and look at the results. But we're just going to continue on with this little tutorial. How are we going to add a horizontal wall? Now let's say, um, you know, I'm going to go over to my results from the previous run, right over here. I'm going to go and look right here. I want to look at the oil saturation over time. So I'm going to click here, oil saturation. This is the oil saturation at the beginning. Okay. And now I'm looking at it uh, over time. So I'm going to go into animation. I'm going to walk through all the way to the end. Okay, and I'm going to notice, wow, there's you know, some still some leftover over here, some leftover oil saturation. Maybe I can put some long horizontal producer over this area, or maybe even in this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Builder right over here. I'm going to go and say, okay, I want to just put this producer not on the first layer and on the second layer. Maybe I'll put it here in this... Uh, well, maybe, yeah, third layer, so it's fine. We could put it anywhere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into wells, and I'm going to well new, create a new well. Call it well horizontal. There we go. And this well is going to be a producer. And I can reset the constraints, and I'm going to give it a constraint that it will operate uh, with a minimum. BHP of a thousand, like all the rest of the wells in the area. Great, I got this going and click on OK. And look, this got a new well. It has a red dot in it. Actually, to see why you have red dots, you just click here and validate. See what it says? Model well completions required. So let's add those well completions. And we go right here, double click on it. Then I'm going to go over to perforations. And now I have this really neat tool. Instead of going and defining here, you know, you could theoretically you can insert 
block, and then you can give it the user block address. You know, if you click here, you can get the UBA of different elements. Instead of doing that, I'm going to go and delete it, and I could just go take the mouse and click away. One, two, three, four, and I'm creating my perfs along this way. That's great. Now I'm going to stop. And actually, there is something even cooler that you can do. That is, let's say I, cuss, I click begin again. Oh, there is a way to sit here, advanced options, perforate all intermediate blocks. So, done. Add all perfs following the structure of the current layer. Okay, I think this is what I want. Let's go and try. Now, theoretically, what should happen is if I click right here, it should perf all intermediate blocks. That way, I don't have to press on every single block. So let me click. Up, oh, bam! Look at all of these gorgeous new perforations. Beautiful. Now, another thing to notice is that you have a certain reference layer, and that's when you have a bottom hole pressure. It will give you the bottom hole pressure with reference to this reference layer. So I'm going to click on OK. Now you'll notice suddenly the red dot is totally gone, and that's it. You're set up. You have a new trigger, and you have this additional production. And now all you need to do is maybe click, save as, give it a, a different name, like prediction, and then add a trigger, and horizontal, and OK. You should go here into your CMG launcher and find out where it is. There we go. Move it into IMAX, and now it's going to start slowly to run. OK, I'm going to click on, well, let's see what happens if I click on three processors. We'll see if my computer still functions. And it's running. You can see here we are waiting for it. So you should see it's been submitted, started running. This might take a few more seconds. Okay, it has finished. Now I'm going to go into my previously opened projects. I think this one should be fine. And I'm, I'm just going to add a new data source for the new simulation that we just did. So I think this one, we looked at the best reservoir prediction. Good. We're going to add a new file. And that is... Let's look at the long names. Ah, there we go. And this should be, we're looking for the .sr3 file. But it's hard to see since I have made the name so long. Let's see if we can make sure we're picking the right. There we go. SR3. Now it's going to add here to our open files. Now let's go make some plots. Time series. Now let's say we want to look at the cumulative oil before we put in the trigger and this additional uh, horizontal production well, and after we added this trigger and horizontal production well. So I'm going to go into sectors. I can choose these two labs over here and look at entire field. And let's look at cumulative oil production. Oil production, cumulative, for sector, add to new plot. We should see two lines. Okay, they're looking like they're basically almost overlapping, but if we go in here a bit closer, we can definitely see there's very slight improvement. So we did a pretty horrible job. Let us go and change the color for this uh, right over here so that we recognize the what is what. So this is our new one, so we're going to put it in pink. There we go. We have slightly, slightly improved our cumulative uh, oil production. So we're going to have to try something else, uh, but that is it. We learned how to use a trigger, and uh, what else did we learn? We learned how to add new wells, which is really important. Great. Well, that's it. With this video, we are done with a very long series of uh, introduction to build our results uh, with CMG. Thank you again for CMG to teaching me this course, and that's it. Have a wonderful time using this software.